When we ask ourselves, what do you know about istighfar? What is it about these two words, astaghfirullah, that really can we shape and really enhance your life and enhance your afterlife? So what do you know about istighfar? Ask yourself. Unfortunately, these days we use the word istighfar as almost like a curse. You say astaghfirullah at somebody as if we know, we're almost swearing at them. But subhanAllah, the meaning of istighfar is far from that. So today, let us explore the different meanings of istighfar. Istighfar is a form of seeking forgiveness and actually as Ibn Qayyim says it's not just seeking forgiveness for the sin you've committed it's seeking forgiveness for the ill effects of the sin you've committed and it's seeking forgiveness and asking Allah for protection from repeating the same sin so when you say Astaghfirullah what you're saying is I seek forgiveness of Allah and I seek your refuge that I don't want to see the ill effects of the sin in my life or the afterlife and I seek forgiveness and I seek your refuge in that I should never ever repeat this sin. It's a form of giving thanks. How? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who has been forgiven all his sins used to make in a seat, used to make in one sitting more than 70 istighfars to the extent when Aisha radiallahu anha one day saw the Prophet praying at night asking Allah for forgiveness and praying until his feet used to swell. She said, O oh Prophet of Allah, why do you do this to yourself? And Allah has forgiven you all your sins. And he said, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Should I not be a thankful slave? So when you seek Allah's forgiveness, when you say astaghfirullah, it doesn't have to be that you've committed a sin. It could be that you are asking Allah to forgive you and because you are, no matter how much we try, no matter how good we are, we have still, we have still don't do as much as we should do. So when you're continually asking Allah for forgiveness, you are actually, you know, you're actually proclaiming and saying to Allah, oh Allah, no matter how much I try, even though I pray on time, even though I do so much nawafil, even though I give charity, even though I do everything, but I still will never be able to do enough, and I'm not doing enough. So Allah, forgive me. There was a story of a scholar who saw a slave carrying a uh, a big burden. And every right step he took, he said Alhamdulillah. And every left step he took, he used to Astaghfirullah. So he asked him, you know, what else? You know, do you say anything? Do you say anything else? Say a different du'a or something. He said, I take a step with my right foot, and I remember Allah's favor upon me. So I say Alhamdulillah. And I take a step with my left foot, foot, and I remember the sins that I've committed, and I say Astaghfirullah. So the scholar said, Faqihal, Faqihal Abdi. The the slave has come, has understood the religion. So. Forgiveness, seeking Allah's forgiveness does not have to be just because you've committed sin. It's, it's actually you are proclaiming, saying, Allah, I'm your slave and I'm trying to do my best. Istighfar opens the doors of sustenance. There was, again, a scholar that once a person came to him and said, Oh, scholar, you know, the, the, there's no rain in the land, you know, our, our crops are dying. He said, Say astaghfirullah. Another man came in and said, Oh, you know, oh, scholar, oh, sheikh, you know, I, I would love to have more money. He said, Say astaghfirullah. A third man came up, oh, bro, oh, Sheikh, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've no children. What should I have children? He says, say astaghfirullah. So everyone in the sit was in the in the uh, sitting next to the scholar was saying, um, three guys came, asked three different questions, and you asked them each one of them to say astaghfirullah. He said, didn't you hear what Allah subhanahu wa taala said on the tongue of Nuh alayhi salam in the Quran when he said, وَقُلْ تُسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ نَهَارًا Nuh السلام, said to his people and seek Allah's forgiveness and he'll open the gates of heaven for you with rain and he'll increase your wealth and increase your children and he'll give you, uh, give you gardens and paradise so it opens the doors of sustenance if you are, if you are poor if you are, if you feel that you you know if you you want to open the doors of sustenance, you want Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bless you with more sustenance. Keep saying Astaghfirullah, increase your Astaghfirullah, Istighfar. It opens the doors of mercy. Salih Salam told his people and seek Allah for forgiveness so that he may have so that Allah may have mercy upon you. When you people who do not say Astaghfirullah, people who do not uh, continually ask for Allah's forgiveness, they are actually. You know, they're actually removing Allah's mercy on themselves. So continually seek Allah's forgiveness and continually ask Allah for istighfar so He opens the doors of mercy.
It opens the doors of knowledge. Ibn Taymiyyah, when he used to say that I would have a question, someone asked me a question, he was a scholar. So when someone used to ask me a question, and which would be very difficult, and I would say Astaghfirullah a thousand times until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of knowledge. And this is actually a really, really useful piece of information for all those, for our students who are having exams in the coming months. Ask Allah for istighfar. Keep, keep saying Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah when you're revising, when you're going through the exam, when you're fight, facing a difficult question. Keep saying Astaghfirullah, it opens the doors of knowledge. Finally, istighfar is a gateway of relief and happiness. Istighfar relieves you, makes you happy. When you're feeling that sadness within you, when you're feeling that, when you're facing a difficult situation, keep saying astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. It removes that there's this, sometimes you know we just feel sad for no reason or you just feel, I don't know, disturbed or frustrated. Keep saying astaghfirullah, keep saying astaghfirullah, it relieves you. So I hope I've managed to give you a glimpse into the huge, huge treasure chest we have called Istighfar. It's only two words and it won't cost you anything. Just say it. And also, you know, if someone asks me what, what would this have to do with productivity, I think, look at this list. If you're someone who seeks forgiveness, give thanks to Allah. And for, with this dua, it opens the doors of sustenance, opens the doors of mercy, opens the doors of knowledge and makes you happy. Won't you be productive after this? So istighfar is also a gateway of productivity. Finally, I would just like to remind you of our webinar this Sunday called Guilt Free Revision. It's sponsored by ProductiveMuslim.com and FOSIS and it's delivered by Brother Tushar who is a time management expert, a Muslim time management expert. It's going on this Sunday, 7 p.m. If you visit the link below, my.dimdim.com forward slash Productive Muslim, register yourself and you could come in and get some really, really powerful tips for revision, inshallah. I make dua subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah eases the exam for all our Muslim students and makes them ease successful, all of them, inshallah. And I wish you all the best. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.